the satellite campus of the University of the Philippines. As we often say at the university and at particularly at the College of Law, mabuhay at magandang umaga po. We welcome you to this uh, campus and we would like to inspire you that this facility is open and available for all. And that uh, at any time, this will be uh, open to everyone. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Attorney Columbari. And uh, today we have with us the former assistant vice, pre uh, the president of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, the lead convener for the Philippine Apex Study Center Network. We have our Dr. Celia Reyes. Please welcome her. Assistant to, to the Dean of UPBGC, Attorney Salma Pir Rasul, Director for Islamic Legal Studies, UP Law Center, and UP Representative to the PASCN. Um, Dr. Aldaba will be joining us very soon from um, uh, Assistant Secretary from the Department of Trade and Industry. Um, to our invited speakers, PASCN Steering Committee members, and representatives of PASCN member institutions, colleagues from government, and friends. Uh, good morning to all of you. The Philippine Apex Study Center Network, together with the University of the Philippines, has organized this annual symposium to provide an opportunity for researchers of um, network member institutions from all over the country to present and disseminate the results of their studies or projects related to key issues involving regional integration and development. Uh, UP, as the host of this year's symposium, has selected the theme, Disruptive Technologies, Opportunities, Challenges, and Risk. And this theme is very much in line with Papua New Guinea's APEC 2018 hosting theme, Harnessing Inclusive Technologies, Embracing the Digital Future. Indeed, the two things present to us the two of the two facets of digital technology. It is disruptive and it can be inclusive. The advancements in digital technology brought about by the fourth industrial revolution, like artificial intelligence and big data, internet of things, blockchain, robotics, neurotechnology, nanotechnology, 3D printing, cloud computing, energy storage, and others may bring opportunities and bring challenges to any country. As Klaus Shaw wrote, um, the current breakthroughs in technology is, disrupt is disrupting almost every industry in every country. And the breadth and depth of these static challenges herald the transformation of entire systems of production, management, and governance. Thus, we see that every country in the Asia-Pacific region is preparing for the fourth industrial revolution. Because these technologies will impact the way we live, work, and communicate, it is important to understand where is the Philippines in the technological frontier. Government agencies and policymakers also need to know about the existing studies of research institutes all over the country in order to come up with policies that would address the issues and maximize the opportunities related to the technologies brought about by the fourth industrial revolution. Thus, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies held its um, annual public policy conference last September 19, and this was actually the, the topic, harnessing the opportunities from the fourth industrial revolution. So let me end my opening remarks by showing you a video which we have shown during the conference. And the message of that video is very much relevant to our symposium today. So let's watch the video together.
to the next slide. Um, because it is a network, I think we should know who these, who are the network members. And uh, the, uh, the next slide actually presents. Um, the next slide presents who are these members. So let me just read them. So there are. So there are actually 12 members of the network, and these are the Asian Institute of Management, Ateneo de Manila University, Central Luzon State University, De La Salle University, Foreign Service Institute, Mindanao State University, the PIDS, Siliman University, University of Asia and the Pacific, University of the Philippines, University of San Carlos, and Xavier University. The Philippine Apex Study Center Network was actually established through Administrative Order 303 as the Philippine government's response to the APEC Leaders Education Initiative that called on member economies to foster regional cooperation among higher education and research institutes on key regional economic challenges. So what are we doing? So these are actually the objectives of the, of the network. Um, I highlighted three. So the first one is to col promote collaborative research, encourage faculty and students to undertake studies on APEC issues, provide technical assistance to government agencies, and establish links with APEC study center networks in the region. And then in the next slide, maybe just to also continue providing a background. As I mentioned earlier, it's um, a, a response to the government um, APEC leader education initiative. And the, as I mentioned earlier in the, of the objectives of the network, we actually have four key programs in the next slide. So we have research program, thesis and dissertation assistance, information dissemination and publication, and technical assistance. Let me just go through them very quickly. So for the research program, so experts from PASC and member institutions are tapped to do research studies through the provision of research grants. And then in the next one for thesis and dissertation assistance, we provide financial assistance to graduate students of PASC and member institutions in the writing and production of their thesis or dissertation on APEC related issues. So let me just take this moment to promote this program. So if there are any one of you who are interested in APEC related issues and are doing their thesis or dissertation, maybe you can apply to this thesis and dissertation assistance program. And then the next one is uh, technical assistance. And let me um, skip that and go to the next one, which is information dissemination and publication. So this annual symposium is actually part of this program, the information dissemination and publication. And to go to the next one, let me just talk about what this, pro um, this, what this symposium is all about. As mentioned earlier by Dr. Reyes, there are two themes of the DPRM and Papua New Guinea is actually very much related to what we are going to talk about today. The symposium has two main parts. The first session um, aims to discuss the research studies of the University of the Philippines. And you can see in the program, uh, what are these, uh, who will be the speakers? And then the second session talks about um, research studies by other PASC and member institutions. And we have selected one um, representative for key regional areas, for one for Luzon, one for Visayas, and one for Mindanao. So these are the speakers, and then for this first session, and then the next slide are the speakers for the second session. Thank you very much.
Dr. Kimba. For today's symposium, we are very honored to have with us as keynote speaker, the former Acting Vice President of PIDS, and now the Assistant Secretary of the Industry Development and Trade Policy Group of the Department of Trade and Industry. Let us please welcome Dr. Rafaelita Aldaba. Vice President Dr. Celia Reyes, Assistant Dean Attorney Elizabeth Punumbari, Vice Fellows uh, Dr. Francis Kimba, Dr. Monette Sarafica, distinguished speakers, representatives from the academy, fellow workers in government, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Over the last two months, we've been hearing a lot about the fourth industrial revolution and PIDS has just finished celebrating the research month with uh, FIRE as its main theme. Technologies such as AI, robotics, machine learning, and so on are already here, and they are no longer just a hype. They could disrupt and transform industries and economic activities, bringing with them both opportunities and challenges. We can summarize these uh, technologies that are reshaping the business world into three. Three great trends. Number one is machines. Number two, platform. And number three, crowd. Machines refer to the rapidly increasing and expanding capabilities of machines. Platform is about the recent appearance of large and influential young companies like Facebook and Airbnb that bear little resemblance to the established incumbents in their industries, yet they are deeply disrupting them. These upstarts are platforms and are fearsome competitors. Now the third trend is the emergence of the crowd, the term for the startlingly large amount of human knowledge expertise and enthusiasm distributed all over the world and now available and able to be focused online. What are the counterparts of these trends? Now for machine, of course, it's the human mind. Accountants with spreadsheets, engineers with computer-aided uh, design software, and assembly line workers next to robots are examples of mind and machine combinations. The counterparts of platforms are products. A ride across Metro Manila is a product or service, while Uber or Grab is the platform people use to access it. And for the crowd, the counterpart is the core. Core refers to knowledge, the expertise, and capabilities that companies have built up internally and across their supply chain. So with all these recent technological changes, will mines, products, and the core be obsolete or headed in that direction? I don't think so. Human abilities, excellent goods and services, and strong organizational capabilities remain essential to business success. But we need to think how to integrate and rebalance between minds and machines, between products and platforms, and between the core and the crowd. Understanding when, where, how, and why these machines, platforms, and crowds can be effective would be the key to success in the economy today. Technology is a tool, and this is true whether it's a hammer or deep neural network. Tools don't decide what happens to people. We do, right? While technology creates options, success depends on how people take advantage of these options. 
we have more powerful technology at our disposal than ever before. And this means we have more power to change the world. Depending on how they are used, machines, platforms, and the crowd can have very different effects. No one knows exactly how the future will unfold. What we do know is that the disruptive power of these technologies must be harnessed as an opportunity to design the future. And some things that I hope we can ponder in our discussions today, will we apply these technologies to help accelerate development, improve living standards, foster inclusive growth, Will we take advantage of these technologies to cut bureaucratic red tape, invest in education and training, unleash entrepreneurial energy, and create new value-added jobs? It is important for us to combine the strengths of humanity and technology to build a better future for our citizens. And this is our guiding principle as we shape our innovation policy which is at the front and center of our new industrial policy, which we call Inclusive Innovation Industrial Strategy. Many of our industries are not Industry 4.0 ready. Some are still in the mechanization phase, that is Industry 2.0. And to face the challenges and take advantage of the opportunities, our industries need to be competitive. And to be competitive, they need to be innovative. We launched the Philippine Innovation and um, Entrepreneurship Roadmap last week. The goal is to close the gaps in our innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem by strengthening the following. Government, academic industry, collaboration, human capital development to advance innovation and entrepreneurship, collaborative programs to address skills mismatch, funding access and finance, especially to support startups and micro, small and medium enterprises, industry cluster development, and acceleration of the commercialization of research, investments and market-oriented research that would address societal needs and industry issues. Now, um, since I don't have much time, um, I have a video. Can we, can we watch the video? It would summarize uh, our um, inclusive innovation uh, strategy and our focus on um, innovation. We live in an industrial world. The applications and benefits of technology and industry have become the hallmarks of progress and of modern societies. Commerce, manufacturing, mobile telecommunication, transportation, and many other aspects of everyday life are made possible by advances in science, innovation, and the globalization of the world economy. In the Philippines, trade and industry have paved the way for unprecedented economic growth in the country's history. And now, we find ourselves at the dawn of a new industrial revolution, one that will transform systems of production, business models, and the global market. Now, something to define Industry 4.0 is the convergence of four big technologies applied all over the value chain from when a customer order is received in any company all the way down to customer service. By having innovation in our culture, then we can achieve a level of differentiation that enables us to be ahead of our competitors. Recognizing the need for Filipino firms to be ready for the fourth industrial revolution, the Department of Trade and Industry is implementing the Inclusive Innovation Industrial Strategy, or IQS. Through IQS, the Philippines aims to grow and develop globally competitive manufacturing, agriculture, and services industries in the country, while strengthening their linkages into domestic and global value chains. Among its priority industries are automotive and auto parts, aerospace parts and aircraft maintenance, repair and overhaul, agribusiness and tourism, chemicals, 
construction, transport, and logistics. Creative, furniture and garments. Electrical and electronics. Innovation and research and development. Inclusive businesses. Iron and steel, tool and die. IDBPM and e-commerce. Shipbuilding and ship repair. Filipino vision and entrepreneurship are central to IQS. Together with the Department of Science and Technology and other national government agencies, the DTI is collaborating with industry and the entity towards establishing an inclusive innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem in the country. The ecosystem seeks to strengthen linkages between industry and the entity, an essential element for the ecosystem to thrive. It also aims to ensure that relevant education and training, adequate funding and financing, and support and services for the country's innovators and entrepreneurs are accessible. We actually resolved a couple of technology challenges with a big help from a couple of universities where we actually worked hand in hand with some of their professors, PhDs, and together we, they helped us in resolving technology issues. Last year we established an industry council of advisors. This is where we bring in industry figureheads to give us some advice on how to get closer to what industry looks for. With a conducive environment for innovation and entrepreneurship, Filipino firms can capitalize on industry 4.0 technologies and seize market opportunities. In the process, they will be able to generate jobs, reduce poverty, and contribute in achieving sustained and inclusive growth in the country. Collaboration. Innovation. Acceleration. These are the paths towards growing connected and creative communities throughout the country. Guided by IQS and with a strong collaboration between government, industry, and the academe, the Philippines will be in a better position to leapfrog to Industry 4.0, transform the country's economy in the new digital age, and uplift the lives of the Filipino people. It's time for the Philippines to be Industry 4.0 ready. Did you see the hemming robot in towards the end? Uh, that belongs to one of our uh, parts makers in the automotive industry. So um, just to conclude, innovation lies at the core of any solution to the challenges we are now facing. And whether we are in government, in academe, industry, or civil society, as leaders, it is our business imperative to continuously reinvent, rethink, reimagine. Let us all work together and collaborate to advance innovation and entrepreneurship, uplift the lives of the Filipino people, and make this country a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aldaba. Uh, we now pause for a 15-minute break, but we request the speakers to please stay for a brief uh, photo session. So, we will resume the session uh, after the first, the 15 minute break. May we call on first uh, Attorney Columbari, Dr. Celia Reyes, Dr. Aldaba for a photo session, and, and Dr. Kimba, and then uh, the session one speakers and moderator, Dr. Serapica, Professor JJ Singh.